Sorry, uh, we just got a new A6500. I'm testing out the autofocus. Hello everyone, how's it going? I'm Todd with PremiumBeat.com and in this video, I'm gonna show you how to make some really cool character introduction style graphics like the ones you just saw. Now you could use these for an opening title sequence or maybe photos that you have for like a documentary style project that you wanted to reveal in a really interesting way. We have these really great assets now that we can use from Rocket Stock. They have a pack called Hassan. It has over 50 really high quality elements I think they shot with like a red epic on like 6K or something like that. You can use these for all kinds of different things. Now with this video, I'm gonna include a download link that you can download some of the footage from this project that I'm about to show you, as well as a few free assets from the Hassan pack so you can follow along. Let's get started. Go back in, go back in, go back in. Oh my God, the train. Okay, so in this project, what I did was basically I, you know, got out the, the old Ursa Mini and put it on a Ronin. You don't have to do all of that. That's just how I did it. You could honestly just as easily do a sequence like this handheld. We just, we, we kind of got a little carried away, but it was a lot of fun. And one thing that I want to point out real quick is that when this guy ran by at the end, this perfect timing here, that was completely unplanned. I don't even know that guy. And as you can tell, I was pretty stoked about it. <laughs> So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna give you this shot. Right when he puts on those sunglasses, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make a cut, okay? And I'm gonna slide this second part of the shot back. Let's say, you know, two, three seconds, something like that. And then what I'm gonna do now is I'm going to go back one frame with the left arrow key. I'm gonna hit this little camera button right here. I'm gonna hit export frame. And what that's gonna do is it's gonna give us options of how to save an image. And I'm just gonna save a JPEG and I'm gonna select import into project. And basically all you gotta do is just drag that on top of your clip here and just cut it to the length of the gap that you left. So let's just see the timing there. Okay, so there we go. That's plenty of time for us to have our graphic up and do all the cool stuff we wanna do with the ink elements. So from there to get it over to After Effects, all you have to do is just right click on your image that you just selected and send it to After Effects by clicking replace with After Effects composition. So we're gonna hit that. And what it's gonna do is it's gonna open up after. <laughs> uh, all that means is I just have too many computers. And so here we go. Now we just have this After Effects composition with this still shot of our character here. And now's the really fun part. You duplicate it by hitting Command D and I'm gonna grab the mask tool and we're gonna spend a lot of time drawing a mask around him. And I don't know about you guys, but I just think this is just so much fun. And one thing that's really cool when you're masking is when the, the person that you're masking has jeans that have a lot of little ripples and folds in them in the shot. And now through the magic of editing, here we go. We have our character cut out and I ended up having to make a couple of extra masks on top to kind of cut out this area around his hand and uh, where his arm meets his head, all that sort of stuff. You'll just drop those below and set them to subtract mode, just like that. So now we have the character where we can lay stuff behind him and that's when the fun starts. So now we can start using elements from the Sun pack to start adding interesting transitions and colors and everything. What I'm gonna do for this example is I'm gonna go to color correction, tint and make him black and white. And then I'm just gonna grab a curves effect as well from the color correction menu. So go to color correction, curves, and we're just gonna crush down the darks quite a bit and then bring up the lights, get a lot of, a lot of cool contrast going, maybe a little too much on the darks there. Yeah, something like that. I'm gonna bring in a couple of different things. The first thing is obviously the Hassan pack. So I just brought that in and there's quite a few different elements in that folder, but I'm gonna also bring in a couple of other elements. So we have the emulsion pack, which is a really cool pack of film grain overlays. One of those is the eight millimeter dirty grain. I'm gonna go ahead and grab that. And then there's also going to be a, in the canvas pack, which is a loopable backgrounds pack from Rocket Stock. I'm also gonna grab a paper texture. I'm gonna choose paper one just cause it's white. And that's also gonna have this kind of grungy paper kind of look to it. So diving into the ink elements here, I really like ink spill three for this. It kind of moves quick and it covers a lot of the frame. So I'm gonna grab that and I'm gonna drag it in and I'm gonna put it underneath the cutout character. So I'm gonna go ahead and just name this character and I'm gonna name this background. 
So with the ink spill down here, so now you can see, there we go, it's in our shot. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the paper texture that I talked about before, I'm gonna drag it underneath the ink spill. And with these ink spill elements, it's important to note that they're finished out in 4K. So if your project is HD or 1920 by 1080, you're gonna wanna scale it down. The quickest way to do that is to right click the element and go to transform and select fit to comp. And that's gonna scale it properly. And after you've got your texture in there, you're gonna go to the track mat here, go to none, drop that down and select Luma inverted mat. And so now what's gonna happen is it's gonna use the Luma channel from the ink splash transition to basically make your texture appear. So there we go. We have a, this really cool kind of papery texture splash kind of transition thing. So I'm gonna grab the paper one layer here. I'm gonna go to effect, color correction, hue and saturation. So now here you just click this colorize checkbox. I'm gonna turn up the saturation pretty much all the way and I'm gonna bring down the lightness till I get a color that I like. And I kind of liked in the example, I did like a bit of a pinkish kind of color. I just thought that was kind of striking. It kind of reminded me of, you know, obviously I was going for the baby driver thing a little bit. And so here we go, after a quick RAM preview, cool splash. I'm gonna go ahead and drag that emulsion film grain element down as well and put that on top and it's just gonna add some dirty kind of grungy texture atop the whole thing. And I'm gonna set that to hard light mode. And a really quick way to kind of just speed the process along of adding these layers, I'm gonna go ahead and just duplicate that setup that we just did before, the, the two ink spill and the paper layer. I'm gonna drag that one layer below and I'm gonna also just kind of push that forward in time a little bit. And then I'm gonna take the ink spill, I'm just gonna flip it horizontally. Okay, so now this one's gonna come in from that side and then I'm gonna also flip it vertically, just like that. And for this one, I'm actually, I've decided I'd, I'd rather have it further back. So I wanted to start later. Yeah, there we go. And so now that we have this set up, we can kind of just start throwing in stuff and just changing the colors up as we please. So I'm gonna go to the second one here, the, the one that's in the back, and let's just kind of change the color of that one. Let's go with that kind of yellowy sort of color, something like that. I'm gonna turn down the saturation just a little bit, turn up the, turn up the lightness, get kind of a, tan color. So here's the look we have going now, pretty cool. And again, we can just keep layering elements on. So I'm gonna just duplicate that again, have that up top. And this time I'm gonna bring in an ink splat layer. So we, we've already used an ink spill. This time I'm gonna use an ink splat. And this one looks pretty cool. Let's go with that one. So ink splat six. And what I'm gonna do just to kind of save some time, I'm gonna go to this newly duplicated version of that. What you're gonna do is you're just gonna click your ink spill layer down here and select your ink splat layer, hold down the alt key, and drag it on top and it's just gonna replace it. And I'm gonna go ahead and change the color of that one. This time I'm gonna go for orange. And I want it to go behind the character, so I'm just gonna flip that horizontally. That should put it right behind him. We can actually go ahead and scale that up and just kinda push it right behind him there. Yeah, there we go. Okay, so there we go. The only thing that I don't like is on the ink splat six element, there's a second splat that comes in. That's a really easy fix. All you gotta do is just basically, let's just navigate to the part where the first splat finishes, which is right around there. And I'm gonna go to the ink splat layer. I'm gonna click on that. I'm gonna hold the alt key and I'm gonna hit right bracket. And what that's gonna do is it's just gonna trim that particular element to that point in time that your playhead's at. And then I'm gonna go up to layer, time, and select freeze on last frame. And another thing I'm noticing is I want our character to have a little bit of movement. So I'm just gonna go to the start of the clip, click on our character layer, hit the S key to bring up scale, start the stopwatch, and I'm gonna skip all the way to the end. And I'm gonna turn that up to about 110. Ah, uh, let's, let's go a little crazy. Let's make it 120. So here we go, here's what we've got so far. And it's looking pretty cool, but I think we could go ahead and add in some text. I'm gonna select new composition. Let's just call this text and 1920 by 1080, that'll work. Hit okay. In the original example, I did a big black bar going across and I'm gonna go ahead and just draw that with the shape tool, turn it black. And actually instead of black, we're gonna go kind of gray. I never like to make anything just 100% black. And then I'm just gonna go ahead and grab the text tool, click up here, I'm gonna type in premium beat presents. And I'm gonna go with something really big and bold Okay, so that's looking pretty good for me. I'm gonna go ahead and make this text yellow, kind of an orangish yellow. And so now we're just gonna go back to our original comp. Just drag your text in and kind of position it. I'll put it about where I had it before in the original. And I'm gonna scale it up just slightly so that we can do a little bit of rotation. And I'm just gonna rotate it 
either side, doesn't matter, something like that. So now I'm gonna grab another ink spill. Ink spill four is gonna work for me. So I'm gonna take that, I'm gonna drag it on top of our text. And again, we're gonna make sure it is transform, fit to comp, make sure it's sized appropriately. And we're gonna go to the text element. I'm gonna select Luma Matte Inverted. And so in this example, the ink element doesn't quite fill the frame. So all you gotta do, just kinda drag it down to where it does. Something like there. And so another thing I'm gonna do is just down here, go to new, null object, and select everything but the grain and just parent it to that. And I'm gonna hit the S key for scale, start the stopwatch, skip to the end, and just type like 110, something like that, just to put a grow over the whole thing. And then also just to kind of make it a little bit flashy, I'm gonna go to new, solid, select like a nice kind of yellowy sort of white color. And on that solid, I'm just gonna go to the very beginning, hit the T key, start the stopwatch for opacity, and skip forward about four frames, turn that all the way down to zero. And then I'm gonna duplicate that. I'm gonna go up to layer, time, and select time reverse layer. And all that's gonna do is just add kind of a flash. And I'm gonna set those to add as well and make sure that you put your grain on top. The grain needs to stay on top of the whole thing. And so let's check it out in Premiere now with our original shot. All right guys, so there you go. I mean, in a really short period of time, you can create some really cool graphics using these elements from the Hassan pack. And I also wanna say that Rocket Stock also has a lot of other elements like this. Rocket Stock has ink drop packs. They have all kinds of transition packs. So you definitely wanna go and check that out and see what they have to offer. And again, if you check the download link below in this video, you'll find a download for the ink drops that I used in this tutorial specifically, as well as the clip and the project file for After Effects. And yes, there is a random oil diffuser on my desk now. I've been a little bit under the weather and I wanted it to smell like pine. But I hope you guys enjoy the tutorial and give this a shot. We had a lot of fun doing it and I'll see you guys next time.